Hello everyone, this is Arthak Dev and welcome to my channel. Today, I will discuss about Srojani Naidu as the Nightingale of India. So, without wasting time, let's start. Srojani Naidu aptly and affectionately called the Nightingale of India belongs to the third phase of Indo-Anglian poetry which begins with the beginning of 20th century. Her father, Dr. A. Chottopadhyaya, had settled in Hyderabad, where she was born in 1879. She was a precocious child, means Bachpan mein hi pratibha ka avhaz de dena and wrote a long narrative poem while still a school girl. Love for nature and man was an <coughs> instinct with her. No wonder she fell in love with Dr. Naidu and wanted to marry him against the wishes of her fathers, of her parents. She was sent to England to avoid the awkward situation. As a student in England, she came in contact with great English scholars A. Simons and Edmund Ghosh. When Ghosh went through her poems, he recognized her genius as a poet. At the same time, he advised her to include Indian themes in poems. She agreed with him and started writing about scenic beauty of India and about the myths, legends and rural folk of her native country. Her early poems were so beautiful that she became a more famous Indo-Anglian poet than Tagore and Aurobindo, who were senior to her. Now I will discuss about her works. Then her works, the lyrics, songs and other poems of Srojani Naidu were published in three volumes. The first volume of her poems was published in 1905 as Golden Threshold. So, Golden Threshold. It contains about 40 lyrics on a wide variety of subjects about the common people of India, including fishermen, weavers, farmers, snack, charmers, hawkers, and others engaged in day-to-day -day activities. <clears throat> Srojani Naidu sees the unbroken follow of Indian life through centuries. In these poems, she records in a subtle manner the relationship between man and his mood changing with the modes of nature. Her poems have a bard-like singing quality which no other Indo-Anglian poet had in Vince earlier. The second volume of her poems was published as the bard of the time. As the bard of the time in 19. 12. It is a collection of 46 lyrics which is much more mature than her previous poems. The poems of this volume betray the mellowing experiences of life. 
the mellowing experiences of life means the changed experience of life. This collection includes songs of joy, Indian festivals and songs of life and death. The poetess undergoes the joys as well as the pangs of love and finds himself half in love with his full death kids. As such, many of the songs in the collection record the qualities, sorry, record the dualities of life and death. Joy and pain in graver music than the songs of the earlier collection. The poetess finds final peace in the Lord's assurance. Life is the prison of my light and death the shadow of my fish. The third collection of her poems was published as The Broken Wing. So as The Broken Wing in 1917. This volume comprises 61 lyrics which are permitted with the spirit of India. Permitted means Vyapt. Many of the poems in this volume convey her personal longing and disappointments. <coughs> this volume includes songs Kali, Lakshmi and Lord Krishna. This volume includes a separate section entitled The Temple, which is divided into three parts. Each part consists of eight lyrics which records the spiritual experiences of the poet on a way to life and love. Thus we see that Srozani Naidu, despite her limited range, has written nature poems, love poems, the folk songs, the poems of life and death, and miscellaneous which are about 200 in numbers. But beauty and love are her instinctive passions. She is attracted by love of beauty and the sunflower is attracted by the sun. After 1917, she almost stopped writing poems. Critics hold different opinions on his abrupt change. Abrupt change means a kayak. Achan. In her career. Some say she was not satisfied with her achievements as a poetess. Others are of the opinion that with Gandhiji she found herself in the thick of struggle for independence. Whatever be the reason, she remains one of the most lovable of Indo Anglian poets who revealed the inner spirit of Indian traditional life through her beautiful songs. Her poems are influenced by the lyrical follow of Sally and visual and auditory imagination of kids. Now I will come to the conclusion. In recent years there has been unthinking and unjust comments on the poems of Srojini Naidu, the context of the modernist poems of Eliot and his followers, which influenced the so-called new poets of Indo-Anglian poetry. Of course, the poems of Srojini Naidu do not fulfill this criteria. Moreover, her poems lacks intellectual and philosophical depth and range of Aurobindo. She may not be a great poet, but there is no doubt that she was a poet of fine sensibility. Her genius was essentially lyrical. Her images, similes and metaphors are refreshingly beautiful. The most important and striking quality of her poems is their musical quality, which is as natural as the song of a bird. As such, she has rightly been called the Nightingale of India. 
that's all thank you very much for listening to me hello